Hello everyone and welcome back to Auto X and with us today is the Harley Davidson Lowrider S. Now if you're not familiar with the Lowrider, it's actually a custom motorcycle that was born in the west coast of the United States. Now of course on the west coast, customization was a big factor in motorcycles and the Lowrider S plays upon that part a lot. Now the design obviously pays tribute to the original. Another interesting fact is that the Lowrider used to be part of the Dyna line, but that got uh, cut short in 2017. And 2018, they brought the Lowrider base model back in the soft tail range to India. Now the Lowrider S we have today is called the Lowrider S for a reason. The S stands for special, and that means it gets a lot of different updates to it, including a much bigger engine. Now starting from the front, you can see that it now gets dual uh, brakes and it does have a rake that's now been reduced to 28 degrees. It also has this nice bikini fairing on the headlight and it's got four inch risers on the handlebar to give it a much higher seating position. Then the fuel tank also is quite big, so it is decent for touring. It's now a 19 liter fuel tank and the seat is a very nice scooped out single seat on this model that we have. Even the rear fender pays tribute to the original lowrider as well. So more or less, this is a very good looking motorcycle and it's a classic uh, design obviously and the S uh, with Spencer Special means that it gets a blacked out treatment. Now you can see instead of the chrome they've gone for a lot of black elements but they do have some of the chrome still on the push rods and the shotgun exhaust as well. So overall it is a good looking motorcycle. It's not a very big intimidating bike but it's still a nice comfortable bike to ride on and it looks very good on the road and it does get heads to turn. Now coming to the seating position of this bike when you get on it, it's a very unnatural seating position with the handlebars very high and the mid-mounted controls for your legs. It seems that this bike has definitely got that Superman feel when you're on the highway. But another good thing about the seat though is that when you're riding on this bike, the way the seat is designed is that it keeps your back positioned firmly on the bike. So when you're accelerating down on this big powerful machine, you don't get blown back by the wind, which is quite nice actually. Uh, coming to the engine, the S of course means it gets a bigger engine as well and this one gets the Milwaukee 8114 engine. Now that of course means it's an 1868cc engine and this one gets 155 newton meters of torque as low as 3000 rpm which is mind blowing. It also gets about 92 bhp but this is a very high torque engine and it blasts forward at the simple twist of the throttle. It is right by wire of course. So the feel is very good, it's very instantaneous, but it doesn't feel like it's gonna throw you off completely. It's a very fun engine and it's got counterbalancers as well. So the vibrations have been you know, removed because the new Milwaukee engines are actually very nice. I'm a fan of the engines. They have very good refinement and they don't heat up as much as they used to, but there still is some heat. But overall, the engine performance is fantastic. It's a very powerful, very fast machine and it literally punches you through the air. Now coming to the riding dynamics of this bike, of course it is meant to be a performance cruiser. So you could obviously go and do some nice canyon carving as well. Now don't get me wrong, it's not a sports bike in its full elements, but it does give you a little bit of that taste. So the lean angle on this bike has now been increased to 30 degrees. So it does give you some leeway when you want to turn into corners. But still though, you will find the foot pegs touching the ground a lot. But still, in all honesty, I do think this bike does have some very good sporty elements. But let's be honest here, it's still truly a Harley Davidson and in India with our road conditions, it doesn't seem like the proper sports bike you would imagine. If you are going to be doing long distance touring, it can be a good motorcycle within the city also. It's a nice motorcycle to ride. It makes you feel like a complete badass. But overall, I wouldn't rate this bike on a very high rating because it does have a lot of drawbacks. The rear tire is very wide. The front tire now gets more performance orientation with the Michelin the Scorchers. And of course, the high handlebars don't really feel that good for me. I do think they could have been a little lower, but you know, that's just the design of the bike. And of course, this bike is open to customization. You can get a lot of Screaming Eagle Performance parts customized onto this bike, so you can change whatever you want because customization has always been the root of everyone's desire to have a Harley Davidson. These bikes can be customized to be unique and individualized for your own preferences. So as a performance cruiser, sure, it's not bad at all. We haven't gone on a long distance ride, but considering that it's a very comfortable bike and uh, the fuel tank is big enough, you can go about maybe 350 kilometers without refueling. 
and it uh, does have a very smooth ride quality. The ground clearance is also a little higher than most bikes. And uh, when I get to the suspension, this one gets 42 millimeters upside down cartridges and they're very stiff, obviously not the best for our Indian road conditions, but they do feel very performance oriented. It's the same ones you find on the Fat Bob as well. And even the rake angle is the same as the Fat Bob. Now the soft tail range has really improved from the previous generation and every bike in that range that I've ridden has been fairly fun to ride. They are a lot more sporty in their nature, but this bike truly picks up on that West Coast culture. It's got a very simple design that can be customized to anything. There is one problem though with the gear lever is that it's a little too high from the foot peg. So when you're first getting used to this bike seating position, you have to literally pick your foot up all the way up to change gears. And that can be quite a nuisance when you're in traffic, especially in a city like Delhi. We've also been riding in the rain and I have to point this out that this high performance air filter just sticks out here and it did get some water in it which caused the bike to not start for some reason. So these are little problems that Harley Davidson needs to pay attention to, especially when they're selling bikes that cost 15 lakh rupees in a country like India where the elements are mostly always against you. There's lots of dust, uh, the road conditions aren't the best and of course rain and other, other things can affect the bike. So yeah, overall the build quality, the design, the performance is very good but I still don't see this bike as being a top seller for Harley-Davidson in India. As you already know, Harley-Davidson is suffering tremendously in the world right now. They're losing their customer base and the coronavirus pandemic has certainly not helped them at all. Now this bike is mostly aimed towards younger riders who want that performance oriented bike and I still don't see people, especially in countries like India or emerging markets, the younger customers going for a bike like this. They would probably prefer an ADV or a mid-capacity sports bike which is easy to maintain and of course a lot cheaper. Uh, in the US market, of course, this uh, is what Harley Davidson is doing. They're picking back on their strengths instead of venturing into new model territory with the Livewire and the Bronx. It's bikes like this that the new management is hoping will revive the brand once again. But anyways, if you are interested in this bike, it's rupees 14.7 lakh ex showroom Delhi. So it is a little bit more expensive than the Lowrider base model. But with the new enhancements and the new modifications, this bike certainly has a lot more appealing factor towards it. So there you guys go, this is a very brief review of this bike. The rain has played uh, spoiled sport with us today, so we weren't able to ride it as much as we could. But certainly if you want to test ride this bike, make sure you head down to your nearest Harley Davidson dealership and go ahead and have a test ride. And if you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. And please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel.